very revealing statistic. Lenny Van Gilder tweeted that out during the game yesterday, and everybody picked up on it. Now, there was one exception in 2012 when Coach Payton was suspended where the Saints rushed for over 150 yards at Carolina and lost that game. But this was truly the exception to the rule. Ken Trahan, Sports Nola TV. Saints lose to the Browns. Final play of the game. Been there, done that. And you analyze this thing and you pick it apart and find all kinds of things that you can point to as to why they lost the game. And there are so many ways to go. But talking about the running game, Amy, first and foremost, they threw the ball 40 times. They ran it 27 times. Cleveland's playing six and seven man fronts mm -hmm. in the first half. Saints can't throw the ball because they're in coverage the whole time. When they run it, they run it great, but they don't stay with it. And up until the second half, they average 6.4 yards per rush. I guess the question is, why not run the ball more in the first half? Well, I think everybody was asking that. But, you know, from the very beginning and coming out, they couldn't really get into that rhythm or get into that pace that we're used to seeing for the Saints. And, and I don't know about you guys, but just from the opening minutes of that game, it really it felt like the Saints just couldn't get anything going for themselves. It felt very slow. It felt very sluggish. And, you know, you talk about that. I think that some of it and why they abandoned it is that I think they were trying to get into the pace and the rhythm that they're used to playing at. But yet, no matter what they were doing, they didn't seem to be able to find that really until the second half. But I'll tell you, from minute one of that game, I knew they were in trouble. They just never felt like this was going to be a comfortable win and that it was going to come down to being something that really uh, – we were going to struggle. It's pretty obvious, Brian, yeah. that they really weren't prepared or ready at the start. Two, three and outs, and all six plays called were pass plays as well, just reiterating the point I made a little bit earlier. And is there any explanation for having no sense of urgency to start this football game? No, none at all, Kenny. I mean, you know, I, I felt like it, I can't remember if it was the first series or the second, but Drew got rocked on, on, a, on a, uh, a tackle, I think it was Kruger. Somebody rocked him big time. And uh, I, I felt like it really there was, might have been a play or two where he was trying to get the cobweb shaken out of his head. Uh, but no, there's no excuse. Uh, and, and I know we all picked the, the uh, Saints to beat the Browns, but you know what, I like Mike Patine. And I, and I like what they've done up there. And, uh, and you couldn't go to sleep on this team. And it just goes to show the parody and you know if you don't come to play on a given day you can lose a game to a decent football team. Rick when you turn the table and talk about the Saints defensive effort yardage wise it wasn't bad but that's not what matters when it mattered most they couldn't get off the field they allowed 50 percent conversions on third and fourth down combined and that's always going to get you beat when you give up that many conversions in those situations they just couldn't get off the field when they needed to. Well what happened to the Saints you can see that the defensive backs really hurt him yesterday in the linebackers. But, you know, anytime the motion over to trips and you don't uh, motion over with them, you lead two on three, you know, offense got an advantage. And that's what they was doing. What they was doing was uh, sending the guy in motion on the sink, and they was catching the sinks where the sink defensive backs really didn't make the adjustment. And that's why the guy was wide open because two guys can't never cover three. And what the sinks were doing, they were leaving the guys over there instead of motioning the guy over with the guy and getting in a better position. And that's what, that's what they done. They were making rookie mistakes yesterday. You know what? Uh, i tell you what. We, we know this for a fact. You can bring in Jarris Bird, and you've got Kenny Vaccaro, and Keenan Lewis, and Patrick Robinson. But if you don't get a good pass rush, I don't care how good your corners are in this league, you give, if you can't get pressure with four guys, you've got to bring more people, and that exposes your secondary, Ricky. And that's what happened yesterday. They couldn't get enough pressure with four guys on Brian Hoyer. Well, I mean, you know, you look at the secondary, uh, the corner, they really should have, you know, addressed that a little better, you know what I mean? And everybody say that, everybody look at that. And uh, I like Patrick Robinson, but for us one-on-one, -on -one, I like the offensive guy a lot better. Well, and, you know, going back to Brian, what you said in the first show of the, the season when you talked about that you were really worried about Patrick Robinson, I wanted you to be wrong, but I think that you're right on and we're going to be seeing a lot of struggling happening on his section of the football field the entire season. Well, I'll tell you what, we may have seen the end of Patrick Robinson as a starter, at least for the time being. I think Corey White's going to move in there. But is he know. any better? Well, no, that's a great He's point. I agree with you. I, mean, I, I agree with you totally. Right. If he was any better, he'd have been starting I, on the I, outside I, to begin with rather than playing slot receiver. I'm with you. And you know what? And I'm not a Corey White fan either, Ken. Yeah. I think he's just as vulnerable as Patrick Robinson. Well, there, there's a simple answer to that, Brian. They had Jam Bailey here in camp. How bad could he be that they wouldn't keep him given what they have? But even more importantly, you drafted a guy in the second round, and Stanley yeah. Jean Baptiste, and he's not even active. I think it's time to find out if he can play. You have nothing to lose. Except another 0 I mean, an 0-3 start. And, and look, 
we're all kind of, you know, saying they're going to get back on track with the Vikings coming to town, how well the Saints play at home. But boy, oh boy, oh boy, I mean, you know, they've got to get their act together on defense. Um, and, and look, they had some problems on offense as well in the passing game, Kenny. Well, Ricky, from a player's perspective, they blew all their timeouts on offense, all related to clock issues. And on one other occasion, obviously, when they're trying to draw a team off sides. And even then they got it wrong because take the five-yard penalty and just kick the field goal in that situation rather than burning the time out. Have you ever seen a team this discombobulated no, under I, Drew Brees running this offense? I'll tell you what most disappointing yesterday to me was when Mark Ingram scored the touchdown, he showed no emotion, he threw the ball down like he was just so, you know, mad because he hadn't tucked the ball a whole lot. He wanted a lot of carries and he felt like he should have been running the ball and running over the team. And, and that's what bothered me. When I see a guy score a touchdown and don't show no emotion, that's when I get to uh, wonder well, what's going on. All right, body language, Amy, tells you a lot. We've yeah. seen two games so far. One game, you have a sideline blow up between Mark Ingram and his coach. Yeah. Second game, uh, the defensive coordinator and his head coach. It's being shown everywhere, having a blow up. Emotion's part of the game. Ricky will tell you that. People yell at each other all the time. Of course, cameras are everywhere now. You think this is an indication of maybe some problems within or or are we just making a little bit too much of this? No, I think that any time that you have national television and Sean Payton actually having words with his defensive coordinator where everybody in the country can see, that certainly says that there are issues that are happening within that team. I think that if there's anything that we've learned about Sean Payton, that he generally remains very calm, cool, under pressure, and doesn't let those kind of situations tend to take themselves to the field. And the fact that that, in addition to talking about the loss, is the one thing that everybody around the country is talking about, says that there are probably even more deep-rooted problems happening in that locker room than even we can discuss sitting out here. I think it's the glasses, okay? He's 0-2 with the glasses. Maybe <laughs> he needs to think otherwise moving forward. All right, here's a stat for you, Brian. Last 15 regular season games, you know what the Saints record is? Ooh, let's see. Uh, How about seven. Five hundred. I was going to seven. Is it yeah. seven and eight? Yeah. Okay. You know, Jim Moore's old line. You yeah. are what you are. Yeah. Maybe we're watching well, an indication of a trend rather than an exception or an aberration, which most of us think it is. Kenny, you bro I think you br uh, bring up a good phrase: the body language. I'll give you more body language. Kyrie Robinson. You know what? I remember talking to Pierre Thomas a year ago, maybe two years, when teams are winning and they're successful running backs particularly, they don't mind sharing the ball, okay? But when you get Mark Ingram blew up after the, in the first game, Kyrie Robinson, when he got pulled after a good run yesterday, and he rolled his eyes, okay? And like, oh, Lord, I, here I am. I'm, I, you know, I want to stay in. Look, 0-2 could become 0-3, 0-4, and, and, and suddenly, like Amy, you said, you know, those, the, the small problems become bigger problems, right, Brett? Yeah, I mean, they become bigger problems, but you know what? History repeats itself a lot of time. You remember Buddy Ryan used to have what Mike did yeah. all the time. So <laughs> the Ryan coaches, they just have it with their offensive coaches. You know, they defensive minded, and a lot of time, offensive minded guys really don't get along with defense anyhow. Right. So well, it can blow up, but they'll be all right. They're two good coaches. We're looking at a silver lining of sorts or trying to find one, and certainly number 80, Jimmy Graham, comes to mind where that's concerned. He has performed at an incredibly high level. A lot of people say you get paid and you stop playing. Well, this guy got paid and he's playing. Tied his career high with 10 catches, 118 yards, two scores in this game. Remember, he had eight catches in the opener as well. So, fine, this guy's right on target. He's right where he should be. He's been terrific. They tried to put Joe Hayden on it. Hayden's 5'11", yeah. and that's not gonna work. Right. You can guard him with a corner, but it's gotta be a big corner. He's a beast, Kenny, and you know what? He he really wasn't involved. Like, no, nobody on offense was involved in that first quarter, and all of a sudden, he ends up with 10 catches. He makes Joe Hayden look pedestrian, and uh, he's just a, a flat-out beast. Uh, there's no doubt about it. Yeah, well, that first touchdown that he had at the end of the, yeah, the first you know, half. Yeah, he's bodying that, up. Oh, he, yeah. Absolutely. That just shows. It's a basketball great, move, Yeah, huh? a great yeah. example of his athletic yeah. ability. What's amazing, Rick, is the Saints are second in the league in total offense after two games, fifth in rushing, and they're 0-2. I mean, you know, the offense, you know, it don't mean, uh, you know, a lot of teams let you get all that long as you don't score a touchdown and win the ball game. That's the only thing that counts. I mean, you got a hop off for offense, then you lose two ball games. So, I mean, you got to outscore the other team. It was a shootout yesterday. The Saints both had more points than Cleveland had. On the other hand, Carolina's 2-0. and Pedestrian offense, great defense. Absolutely. And I've got a good stat for you. Lenny Van Gilder appreciate this. Saints are ranked 32nd in the league in defense. 
You know what their passing off defense is, Mr. Van Gilder? It's 32nd. This was the number two ranked passing defense a year ago. It, again, it tells you they're not getting any pressure, and when they do, they're not making any plays in the back end. Jerry Spur, they got one turnover in two games. $54 million. If I'm Tom Benson, hey! Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to get into that more later in the show. Remember, we'll be turning in just a moment. We're going to talk about the NFL, look at results, and talk about what impressed us and who are truly the teams to watch marching forward as Sports Nola TV continues from Premier Dodge Chrysler, Jeep Ram, in New Orleans East. <laughs> 